It's Job Park's workshop, and high five everyone, because I've just been informed it's National High Five Day. Welcome to John Park's workshop. Uh, hey, where'd I go? There I am. So here we are. Unbelievable. It's happening again. Hey, uh, and we've got some people in the chat. Hello over in the chat, Henry Caballero. Greetings from Lima, Peru. All right, we've got some people from Peru in our chat today. That is fantastic. It's a worldwide happening, so I'm so glad that you all can stop by. Uh, so check out the Discord chat if you're interested in chatting with uh, eight free people or the YouTube chat. That stuff's on there. Am I really still oh. <laughs> I thought I had such a smooth transition. I did not. Hello and welcome. It's John Park. And this is John Park's workshop, and I'm sure you couldn't hear any of that because I left the music on real loud. Uh, high five, because I heard it is National High Five Day. And uh, I also wanted to say hello to the people in the chat. We've got Henry Caballero over there saying hello from Lima, Peru in the YouTube chat. Hello, Henry, and welcome. Man, I am terrible at that transition. I tried something new uh, yet again, and no, no, I failed it. I don't think you could, yeah, you, I'm sure you could only hear the music because of how things work. But uh, there we go. Uh, we've also got people over in the YouTube chat. They are the good people that informed me that we could not hear me at all. So thank you, Mr. Certainly and Z Grover for letting me know. Music's still playing. Uh, one day I'll get that right, maybe. So here we are. And uh, before we do anything else, I wanted to uh, do a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, I wanted to mention our jobs board. We've got jobs.adafruit.com, which is a tremendous place to go and post for jobs where you have open positions uh, or post your skills if you're looking for work. In fact, let me bring it up right now. Let's, uh, let me fix this little doodad right here so that you can see my web browser. Stand by. We're bringing in new media from Firefox. Let's see, that's, that's not gonna be it. How about that one right there? Okay, get ready for it. There, that's the Adafruit Jobs Board. We've got a new video out uh, with uh, a little description of how the Jobs Board works. But I think the key thing to know is that it's free. It's entirely free if you're looking for work uh, or if you're looking to hire someone. So, uh, Let's see. Oh, hey, there's FX Music. He says, was there a workshop stream from John Park I missed today? No, it's happening right now. So go to your Twitch or your YouTube and uh, you'll find it. <laughs> you had the infinite number of me on there. Sorry about that. Um, but hey, hello and welcome FX Music. It is great to see you. Also, uh, FX Music makes uh, music with samples sometimes of me saying hello to him from this show, so I'm really just pandering at this point, hoping to get into more of his songs. Uh, so, yes, it is streaming now. Uh, not only do we have a jobs board, but we've got a store, and uh, that's how we keep the lights on at Adafruit. That's how we keep things uh, in production here and, and all the great content coming to you, all the great learn guides. Um, so if you are interested in helping out and you're interested in getting good stuff, because in fact we are not a charity, then uh, go to the store. And when you go to the store, you should use this coupon code today. This will get you 10% off if you just type in gulpfish. Good. Gulpfish will get you 10% off uh, in the Adafruit store today on anything you want to buy other than gift certificates, subscriptions, and software. And uh, the reason I've used the word gulpfish is uh, going to be apparent a little later on. But I encourage you to go check out the store uh, at Adafruit. And if you want to get a little discount on your order, then type in Gulpfish. Huh, FX Music is saying he can't find the uh, Adafruit stream on his Apple TV. I have never tried to watch it on my Apple TV, in fact. So I, I can't help you there. I'm sorry. But uh, if anyone has any tips on that... Oh, he found it. Okay, good. No tips needed. Uh, by the way, I was noticing the other day, not to cast shade upon the good people of YouTube, but I noticed that the Twitch stream is a good, I don't know, 10 seconds ahead of uh, the YouTube stream. It seems much closer to real time. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but there you go. I was watching on something on Twitch and on YouTube, and there was quite a, quite a difference between the streams. Uh, so there you go. Now... I mentioned the, the store, 
And when I mention the store, I often, in fact, always like to provide you with a little guidance, a little product of the week suggestion. And uh, my product of the week suggestion is the Grand Central M4 Express without headers. So this is an at SAMD51 board. And in fact, I got one right here. Let me turn on my little green screen. Uh, so I have the regular header full version right here. So there's your Grand Central with headers. Uh, I really like that we've just come out with this new one that has no headers for two reasons. One, it's in stock, and this one is not currently. Uh, so check out uh, this board if you've been looking for one. And if you want to solder header on, headers on it, you could. It's quite a few headers on there. But the thing I like about the idea of one without headers is that uh, one project that I've been getting ready but I haven't put together fully yet is a um, rotary encoder board. So this is a Adafruit Permaproto, the full-sized one with eight uh, rotary encoders, endless encoders, some people call them. And I wasn't sure how I was going to end up mounting that. It's not going to fit like a shield or anything just because of the layout of this. Uh, and these may actually be separate. I might put it in an enclosure and have the board somewhere else. Running wires, like especially those nice little silicon uh, ribbon wires directly off of the headers over to this board might be a really nice slick way to go. So uh, I'm going to get one of those. In fact, I just placed an order for it. I'm going to get one of those purple uh, headerless Grand Central boards and uh, build that endless encoder onto it. I think that'd be kind of cool. So that, I'll bring it back up for you, that is my product of the week suggestion for you. And I don't have a product project built with it yet. Because um, I don't have it yet. But when I do, I'll put it together and I'll show it to you. Uh, all right, well, the next thing we've got is a little something we like to call the Make Code Minute. Yes, in fact, so there's the Make Code. And uh, what I want to talk today in Make Code Arcade is this new extension that's called the Seven Segment Display. And I'll show you it in action. I've, I've got my uh, Chrome browser up here, and here is Make Code Arcade, and here's the simulator on the left. I'm going to launch the simulator, and you can see I've got a little background with some uh, confetti effects running behind it. And then I have this uh, four digit seven segment display. And you'll see that when I press the A button on the simulator, it increments the display uh, by 25 units every time. Or I can press B and decrement it. Not only that, this is a fully functional object inside of Make Code's space, so I can use the arrow keys and move this object around. Now, on its own, this isn't much of a game or, or a utility of any kind, uh, but this is sort of the fundamentals of a thing that you could end up using in a game or even a non-game project that you build on uh, Make Code Arcade. Especially interesting because we have hardware on the way that's going to be uh, specially designed to work well with Make Code Arcade as well as uh, Circuit Python for creating little devices. Some of them would be games, but maybe you just want to make a, a little counter so you can count people coming into your uh, party or something like that. This could be a way to do it. So the way this is done is I've gone down to extensions and added this seven seg display extension. And this gives me a few uh, sets of blocks I can use. The set that I'm using right now are this create a counter. And here you can see on start, I'm setting my background color to black. Then I'm creating this counter, and I'm adding some options to it that allow me to change the style of it. So you can go with something like, let's say, thin segments at half size. And you'll see when I restart the simulator over here. Uh, in fact, let me pull out the confetti so you can see it a little better. Uh, now I have a different style, and I'm telling it how many digits to have in here. I think it goes up to five. Uh, and then I'm setting the value when I start it up and setting the display color. And then when I want to change those, I'm using a button press A and B to change the my counter variable by either negative 25 to go down or positive 25 to go up. And then I'm also changing the X and Y coordinates of those with the arrow keys. So 
running the simulator again, you can see I can move my display around the screen, and then I can add numbers to it and subtract from it with the A and B buttons. So that's how you can use the seven segment display extension in MakeCode Arcade. And that is uh, something that just popped up, I think. I only noticed it the other day, and uh, I chatted with some of the people at Microsoft uh, about it on the MakeCode team, and they were making changes right up to the last minute. But I really like the way it's working uh, now, and I look forward to banging on it. And if you also uh, have a chance to play around with it or even push it to some hardware, you can push this to the Feather M4, uh, a few other boards, as well as Raspberry Pi. Uh, be interested to see people's experiences using that. And I really like the idea of Make Code Arcade adding some other little utility types of functions that you can use for, uh, for different applications that are useful in games or beyond gaming. So there you go. Uh, now, before we move on to the project of the week, I just wanted to show a little kind of what's going on in my workshop thing. Uh, let's pop over to the bench cam here, and you're going to see I've got this uh, Yamaha Cheapo synthesizer keyboard here on the desk. Um, so if you follow me on social media, you may have seen, I found this on the side of the road uh, the other day when I was dropping my daughter off for school, and it was covered in dirt and uh, mud and grass. And so I didn't have high hopes for it, but I brought it home and I took it apart. And one of the reasons I was interested is that it has real MIDI connections in the back. And what I've done is I've actually pulled it all apart and there was a whole bunch of functions in here in a screen that I didn't care about at all. It, was, it had a lot of functions that were based on um, you learning how to play piano with this graphic display and these lessons and things like that. Really all I wanted at first was to use it as a MIDI uh, output. So I gutted it and got rid of that whole part of the fascia as well as these little speakers that were built in. They sounded okay, but it's better to put it through an amp. Uh, and then these are the um, three boards that run the thing. There's a main processing going on here and sound synthesis as well as this is where the display was. Uh, this has some power management and this is uh, MIDI as well as some inputs. And so what I've got is a couple modes. Right now I have it just outputting MIDI to a different little synthesizer here. So this is like a little Arduino based synthesizer called the uh, triode, the Meblip triode. So you can hear now I've got this large array, the 61 keys to uh, play with. So I can use things like glide on my, let me move this somewhere where you can see it. Sort of see it. It's got a red thing up there. You can do things like detune it got a couple of oscillators on it, and uh, I can go to add an octave to it. Which is super cool. It's a MIDI, uh, MIDI controller, and now I've made it a heck of a lot smaller by getting rid of that. I have this stuff left to deal with, and so I'm, I'm not sure if I want to extend those ribbon cables and mount it beneath and just have it up a little bit, or if I'm going to mount it underneath a, a desk. I'm not sure. Wow, sorry. Um, but it does also have its own synthesis built in, and maybe I'll show that another time. Uh, it's actually, some of, the, some of the sounds on it are pretty good, and what I'd like to do is build maybe an alternate way to um, tell the processor on here which sounds I want to use and any other parameters. There aren't many that you can adjust. I think there's a reverb that turns on and off. But um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm playing with on the side. This was my dirty, dirty uh, keyboard. I ended up pulling all the keys off and putting them through the dishwasher, which I kind of recommend, except it got too hot and it turned some of the black gray. ABS plastic didn't love uh, going through the dishwasher, but it sure cleaned a lot of dirt and cobwebs and stuff off of it. So anyway, that is uh, what's up on my workbench right now. And uh, eventually, I think Scott Shawcroft, Tan Newt, is going to help me uh, try to intercept some of the key commands with um, a circuit Python device in the middle, sort of a man in the middle attack. So uh, we'll see where that goes. Yeah, Matamali says the keyboard followed me home. It really did. I mean, what a gigantic, huge, awful thing, but, but this size is actually um, pretty darn cool. So uh, that brings us now to the uh, project build of the week. So 
I was showing it at the top of the show, and let me put it back here underneath my little overhead. There you go. So this is the League of Legends Summoner level viewer. So if you're uh, not familiar with it, League of Legends is a super popular video game. One of the more popular video games in the world is played as an eSport. There are million dollar uh, prize uh, purses on some of the, the tournaments. And so I thought it appropriate to uh, take the Pi Portal and put it on this trophy. You may have seen this before. I've used this for some other uh, projects. But I've got this little cheapo trophy I got at the thrift store. And I've just zip tied a Pi Portal to it. Uh, and then I'm going to set this back under here where you can actually see it a little more clearly. And let's go full screen on that. How about? Uh, so you can see, oh, <laughs> this is knocking out the green in there. So, so a lot of the colors are going weird. Let's see. Let me, let me turn off the green screen on this one for a moment. All right. So there, that's probably a little better to look at. Uh, there you can see our, our display. And the way this is working is I'm going to pop up my Moo here. And let's move this off to the side. And what you can see here in my Moo session is um, I'm importing just time because we're going to be using a delay uh, to sleep and, and just check for new stats every once in a while, importing all the board functions, and then importing the Pi Portal library. Uh, then we go out to the secrets file where we're getting our login info for uh, Wi-Fi, because this is all uh, updating over Wi-Fi. Every couple minutes it checks to see what your summoner's level is. And backing up for a second, actually, I realize I ha haven't explained. Um, so the Summoner is the name of your character, essentially. Uh, and there's a leveling system like there are in a lot of games. And so, excuse me, one of the many, many statistics that you can get uh, on League of Legends is just what's your, your level for your character or your summoner. Um, and I'll show you in a second what, how we're doing that, what the API that we have to access uh, allows us to do. Um, so what I'm doing in code is then just asking for a summoner name. So you can see, let me zoom in even a little more. You can see right now my friend uh, Joe Bowers, O Bows, I've got his summoner name. So if you know someone's summoner name, in fact, anyone in the chat who plays uh, the game, tell me your summoner name right now if you, if you care to share it, and we'll uh, plug this in there and uh, update it and see what your level is. Now, mine is, I'm, gonna up, I'm just going to uncomment this. I'll comment this here for clarity. And hit save. What you're going to see here is my character, Gulpfish. Remember, that's our coupon code of the day is Gulpfish. I just created this character and have played f about five minutes of League of Legends in my life, so I'm no expert. Um, but what it's doing right now is it's going on um, to my Wi-Fi. So it's logging in. And you can see uh, the first thing it does is it just displays the name, and that's just coming straight from... Uh, my text that I typed here. But now you can see it's showing I'm a level one. So I'm the very first possible level character. Um, one thing you might not have heard is it's also playing a little sound. I have a little zoom kind of sound that comes in that actually I recorded off of that little red synthesizer um, that pops up and, uh, and plays that every time your level changes. So it's going to check every couple minutes. And if you've just completed something in the game where your level has gone up, it's uh, when it finds that after a couple minutes, it's going to play that sound for you and, and pop up the level. Um, let's see, no one brave enough in the chat to tell me your summoner name? Or does no one play this game who's watching the show? Let me check over on YouTube chat. No? All right, so let me do, let me do another one. Uh, here is our own Sedacious. Adafruit's own Sedacious, and he did share his summoner name with me, which is Sidlan. Um, so you can see it's connecting. I'm going to uh, show you the, if you can read it down here at the bottom, it's saying no SD card found. So it's not going to use the SD card to store any information. Uh, it's retrieving data. Uh, reply is OK. Making a text area with the string 36. So that's Sedacious's uh, level. And then it played the sound again because it said we got a new level in. Um, so how this is working is Let's uh, take a look at this line here. So I've got 
the variables that matter, I've put in the uh, username, so SIDLAN in this case, and then I'm saying the data source is this URL, which Riot Games is the maker of uh, League of Legends, so they have a developer API at this URL, uh, and presumably I have them for different games of theirs. Here's LOL, League of Legends, not laugh out loud. Uh, and then it's asking for the info on their summoners API. You can pick them by a, a number of things like a user ID and some other look, user ID looking thing, and we're using just by name. Here it plugs in my variable of the summoner name, uh, and then it's going to ask for the API key. And so the API key is stored in my secrets pi file under this uh, token or, or key called league token. Uh, and so that's something that I went out and got on the League of Legends site, uh, or on the Riot Games developer site, and I've plugged it into my secrets file. So you don't want to share that, so I won't show that to you. Um, but what I can do is have a look at what the um, API returns. So let's bring up for a second this right here. So you can see uh, this is the result of me looking up Gulpfish. And what I get are these, uh, this is a JSON file and it's returning the keys for an ID, an account ID, a PUUID, name, profile ID, uh, revision date, and the summoner level. So that is actually the only thing that we're, we're trying to get in this case from this JSON file is just the summoner level. You could throw other info on here, just none of this is actually very interesting or meaningful to me. Um, this is what the JSON file looks like before it's gone through the beautifier. So this is the Firefox beautifier that just makes it easier to navigate through data and see it clearly. Um, but this is the sort of pretty version. Here's the raw version of the data, but here it is with some uh, carriage returns in it. Um, so you can see this line right here is what we're looking for. So summoner level is the key, and the value for that key is 138 in this case. Um, that is, if we go back to our moo, the Riot Schmick. So someone at Riot Games named Schmick, uh, I'm presuming, is a uh, hugely high level character. So if we go in here and uncomment that line, uh, this time, by the way, I'm going to be quiet and hold my mic close to it so you can hear the sound. In fact, let me take my mic off. Okay, so hopefully you heard that. We got our little uh, wave file that plays there. So you can pl put any wave file you want into there. Uh, we have standards that are written up in the learn guides for what that um, bit rate uh, mono. I think it's 22, uh, 22k or 22 hertz, 22 hertz, 16-bit uh, or or lower if I'm remembering that properly. Um, wave file that it'll play back when it when it reaches that. So if we look in the code, we can see we're pulling this data source together by grabbing uh, the uh, Riot Games URL, the data location, that's actually the, the key that we're looking for. Uh, here we're building a caption, which is what we're going to end up putting on the top of the screen there. I know it's called a caption, but up at the top where it says the summoner and the summoner name. Uh, and then this is the PyPortal constructor, which says, okay, go to this URL path, get this JSON uh, path and, and whatever is on the other end of it is what we're going to end up uh, printing. And this is the uh, actual main loop that happens is it uh, checks for that pi portal fetch which goes out and uses all that URL uh, and API key info to go and find that JSON file and get that, that uh, value that we want to print. Uh, here we can see it's if, if the um, value that we get is different than the last time here it says if the last value is uh, lower than the current value, so we've gone up, so we've leveled up, uh, then we print new level to the, to the REPL here, and then we play back that um, wave file. This is called triode low fade dot wave. Uh, and 
Okay, here I'm waiting five minutes. So every every five minutes is when I'm checking that. The uh, if we take a look actually at the Riot Games developer portal, let me switch you over uh, back to Firefox. You can see here that um, this is what the developer's portal looks like. Let me zoom that in a, bu a bit. Uh, you basically log in with a... Um, I'm putting the steps of this in a guide, but you're basically going to log in as a uh, player of the game. You have to launch the game, create a summoner. You might even have to play for like a second and then quit. That allows you to then actually get a confirmation email, go to the developer portal and log in. Uh, once you've done that, then it's going to give you a development API key, uh, which is what I'm using right now in my secrets file to get access. Note, this, uh, this API key actually... Um, expires every 24 hours, so it's just meant for testing. What you then have to do is go to this register product and make a personal app. You can make uh, business level apps or just personal level apps. So I've made a, a personal level app. It can take a few days for them to approve that, but once they do, they do and they should, it's, it's, uh, I'm not doing anything against their, um, their terms of service or anything. Once they do that, then I should have a, a permanent um, API key that doesn't expire. Maybe it expires every few months or every year. Uh, you'll notice their API actually has really f uh, allows a lot of uh, checks. So you can do 20 requests per second uh, or up to 100 requests every two minutes. So our five minute wait time or two minute wait time is uh, not going to be a problem. Sometimes you have to be careful because APIs will get mad if you ping them uh, too quickly. It'd be unlikely that you'd ping this one all that quickly. Um, so that just opens the door. If you look, in fact, at um, the API documentation, uh, it's really well documented. And there are there's an API for tournaments, for example. So if you know of an upcoming tournament, and I believe there's a, is it a national tournament? Uh, Sedacious was saying that there was a big tournament coming up. So if you know of a, uh, a tournament, you can get enough info about the tournament name or ID that you can then uh, adjust your display so that maybe it's showing the name of the top ranked player uh, in a given uh, bracket in the tournament, that sort of thing. It has a, a ton of stuff that you can um, gain from the API. So uh, again, like most Pi Portal products, uh, projects, very cool that if you can uh, find a, an API that gives up interesting stuff in a JSON file, then we can probably uh, use it and display it uh, right here on, on the Pi Portal. So that, uh, I'm going to check again. Did anyone have a, have a summoner name? I don't, think, I don't think they did. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd. Uh, we'll, we'll throw this out there uh, on Reddit and see if, uh, if people are interested in doing their, their uh, summoner names. But um, that is our project for the week. Um, before we go, I want to mention again that if you want to go and pick up some stuff in the store, then use Gulpfish. Gulpfish will get you not only a very low level, level one summoner in League of Legends, but it also get you 10% off, yay, in the Adafruit store. So head there, get some cool stuff. Um, I know the Pi Portal is, I think the Pi Portal is currently out of stock, but there are some Adabox 11s in stock. It's not the subscription version. So it does not contain the bonus uh, Adafruit I.O. card, I don't believe. But it does have a Pi Portal, the stand, uh, the 2-meter purple USB cable, which I really like. That's the one I've got on here right now, actually. It's a, a nice USB cable and a nice length, and it's distinct, so you know what's plugged in where if you have a billion USB things plugged in like I do. Uh, and the penny roll, which you can use for the enclosure. So it has the enclosure uh, in the Pi Portal. So I think... Uh, it, it may be a comparable value to buying those things on their own, but it's also available. If, you, if you've been wanting a Pi Portal and didn't get one, then go check it out. Uh, along those lines, if you are interested in the next Adabox, Adabox 12, and I think you may be, go subscribe. I believe you can already go and subscribe right now to 12 so that you won't miss out when that one comes. Um, and... With that, I will say thank you so much for stopping by. I will uh, be hanging out in the Discord chat for a little bit and see if anyone has any thoughts, questions, comments. Uh, and otherwise, that has been John Park's workshop for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park. Thanks and goodbye.